It is no secret why the United States military is the most effective fighting force in the history of the world. It is a microcosm of America, an institution that requires teamwork, and a self-sacrifice, it also prizes the individual, the individual thought, individual initiative, and individual talent. The United States military, like America, is always striving to become the best version of itself. And though imperfect, from its beginning, it has been an institution that allowed the talent to rise, to prove itself, to enable those who can meet its exacting standards to shine. This is why there is no greater American institution than our military. If you can face its challenges, if you can meet its standards, you can earn the opportunity to wear the uniform. It is a place where talent combined with opportunity allow Americans to accomplish the extraordinary. With the story of a pilot who proved just that, it's Diane Lane. On July 29, 2009, two U.S. Air Force medevac helicopters raced across the Afghan sky, desperate to reach three Americans critically wounded outside Kandahar. Seated in the left-hand pilot seat of the lead helo, with call sign Pedro 15, was Air Force Major Mary Jennings. This mission was all too familiar for Major Jennings. An Army convoy had been hit by an IED, the soldiers pinned down by an enemy ambush. As Pedro 15 cleared a ridge, the charred wreckage of the convoy could be spotted below. The troops pinned down by Taliban fire. On cue, the helo swung around to drop its Air Force para-rescuemen, nicknamed PJs, to aid the wounded. Just as the PJs cleared the helicopter, there was a loud crack as the windshield of Pedro 15 shattered in front of Major Jennings' eyes. Her arm felt warm and wet. She'd been hit, with shrapnel peppering her arm and thigh. Though bleeding, Major Jennings assured her comrades that she could still fly, and Pedro 15 swung back around to land. The wounded soldiers had to be evacuated immediately. There was no choice but to brave the enemy fire. The wounded loaded aboard. Pedro 15 took off. But seconds later, the smell of gas filled the cabin as Major Jennings watched the fuel gauge drop dangerously fast. Enemy machine gun bullets had hit the helicopter's fuel line. The pilots were forced to make a hard landing on a rocky ridge, still dangerously close to Taliban forces. Major Jennings grabbed her rifle, climbed out of the wounded helo, and waited for the attack that was sure to come. Within minutes, bullets began to ricochet off the rocks along the ridge below. Taliban fighters were pressing closer. The situation dire, the emergency radio channel crackled with a message from a nearby army helicopter. The pilot had a plan. Two army helos would swing down and pick up Major Jennings and three other crew members. The second medevac helo circling above, Pedro 16, would follow, evacuating those remaining. The catch was, there were no extra seats on the army helicopter. MJ and her comrades would need to stand on the helo's skids, hanging on to the side. Looping her belt around the helicopter's rocket mount, MJ watched for the enemy as the helo took to the air. Suddenly, off in the distance, she noticed a flash, the muzzle of a Taliban rifle firing at the downed crew. Mary Jennings began squeezing off rifle rounds at the Taliban position, standing on the skids of her helicopter as it took to the skies. Her quick action bought the helo precious seconds to take off and evacuate to base. In the end, the Americans were all safely evacuated, due in no small part to the actions of Major Mary Jennings. She would soon return home, marry childhood friend Brandon Hagar, and prepared to apply to become a special tactics officer. Yet, she was forbidden to even apply. The military's ground combat exclusion policy banned women from frontline combat. This came as news to Major Jennings, who had already seen her share of combat. And so, for Mary Jennings Hagar, one option remained. Change the policy. On November 27, 2012, she became the lead plaintiff in a lawsuit against the Secretary of Defense. The lawsuit argued that women were not only serving with distinction as combat pilots, 
but battlefield commanders were already finding ways to get them on the front lines for sensitive duties interacting with other women. And in the American tradition, any job should be made available to whoever could best fill it, regardless of age, race, or gender. The Secretary of Defense agreed. At a press conference two months later, he announced that the military's ban on women in combat roles was over. If they could do the job, they would not, they could not, be denied the opportunity. Along with the Purple Heart, Major Mary Jennings Hagar would be awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor for her actions in Afghanistan. She is only the second woman in U.S. military history to receive the decoration. Thanks to her service, on and off the battlefield, she will not be the last. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major Mary Jennings Hagar. So what, what goes through your mind when you're on a mission like the one we just actually heard about? Your world becomes very small and it in, is encompassed only in the men and women that you're with. Um, that day I was with uh, some of the best men that I've ever flown in combat with. And uh, my greatest fear was not, and a lot of the people in this room and watching on the AFN, I think, can uh, understand this sentiment that my greatest fear was not dying or getting shot again. It was that I would not do everything to the utmost of my ability to save the, the brothers that I was serving with. So that was the number one uh, goal was to serve my country and my, my brothers with honor. And you're one of only two women to have received the Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor. Uh, what does it mean to receive such a distinction? It means that a lot of women have been under-recognized for their, <laughs> their efforts and their valiant. Um, you know, it was alluded to during the Quir Korean War uh, segment that I think a lot of the men and women who have served in combat, um, when they hear words like extraordinary uh, valor and heroism, I think what, what we mean when we say it's not extraordinary is that for me, it was ordinary. I was, I'm being honored for things that I was seeing men and women do on a daily basis during my three tours in Afghanistan. So inspiring. And what would, what would you say to young girls who'd like someday to follow in, uh, in your footsteps? Um, probably the same thing I would say to, to young, young men. Um, and, and to both, I would say, uh, don't ever let someone tell you what you can and can't do. That's for you to decide and you to figure out. Um, there is no failure as long as you're continuing to try. What a message, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Major Mary Jennings Hagar.